Hey everyone, I'm Ben Olswang. As many of you may know, I was heavily involved in the development of the Mackie DL series mixers and master fader control application. Over 10 years, I've seen a lot of people mix on these products, and I've talked to a lot of you about how you use them. And through this time, I've noticed a few features that I think are underused, probably because they're not very well understood. So I wanted to take this time to go through some of these features to help you get more out of your mixers. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, I think you'll learn a thing or two. So today I'm gonna to talk about view groups, and in future videos, I'll cover some other features. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so we're here in Master Fader, and I have a show uh, open just to demonstrate. We got a kind of a five piece here to show things. Uh, we have a, some drums, bass, uh, two guitars, a uh, couple guitar channels for the second guitarist, keyboard player, and then vocals for each. Everyone but the drummer is singing, so we have a lead and three background vocals. Click track, music playback, effects. I got a couple subgroups for the drums and keys, and then my VCAs. And then I've also set up aux ends for the... Uh, monitor mixes for each of the members of the band. So just pretty standard just to show things off. So on the right below the mix selector, here's your view group selector. And there are two factory supplied view groups, all and auto. We'll get to those. And then there are six user assignable view groups. So I've all selected and that's uh, the way it comes by default. And, and honestly, that's the way a lot of people just Leave it at that, I, I see. So what do view groups do? They allow you to hide and show certain channels. They do not affect the audio in any way. They purely are a visual aid to let you see and focus on the channels that you want to and easily switch between groups of channels that you want to pay attention to. So how do you create view groups? Well, if you go into your view group menu and press assign, you can see that you can select a view group at the top and then simply enable or disable one or more channels that you want to appear in that view group. So if I just leave it at that for view group C and call it this, now close that assignments view. Now I can select the view group I just called this and I can see those channels. Real simple, switch between looking at all of them and your custom view group at a tap. So there's a lot of different ways to use view groups. I'm going to clear this one out and show you a few of them. I've created two, as I mentioned. Uh, first one is called in use, and that shows all the channels except for the channels that aren't currently being used. Pretty obvious. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's enable all and start swiping and we'll see that this particular show only uses 22 of the 32 channels in my mixer. So I have a bunch of blank channels in the middle that I have to swipe past. And then I'm only using two, well, one stereo and one mono of the six subgroups as well. Those aren't being used. So wouldn't it be great if I could hide those? And that's precisely what I've created with this in use view group. Now, when I select it, it hides all but the subgroups I'm using and it hides those other channels that aren't being used, making my mixer feel smaller and just let me focus on the channels I want. Nice. Another great application is this mix view group that I've created. Let's check that out. You can see it shows just the VCAs and the uh, kind of three kind of key input channels that I might want to adjust in addition to the VCA. So during the mix, I've got everything dialed in. I can ride those VCAs, still have adjustments for the main uh, vocals, maybe quickly adjust the snare, top snare and kick mix just a little bit if I want to do that. I can mute effects during uh, during uh, breaks in between the this each song. So I have everything I need in one view here. So if you're just going to create view groups and you're getting started, these are two great places to start. I've created a couple other examples. Let's show them now. If I select instrument type, 
I just made a show to change my view groups here or a different snapshot to let me easily jump to a different set of view groups. You can see here, I made view groups for each instrument type. So if I select drum, now I'm just looking at the drum channels. And remember, these channels can be inputs, returns, effects returns, subgroups, and VCA. So it's every channel that I need to deal with the drums as the front of house engineer. Bass is similar, it only has a few channels here. Uh, inputs and the VCA. Guitar, I have all the guitar channels and that guitar VCA. Keys look similar, it has a subgroup. And the Vox has all those inputs, the two vocal effects, vocal VCA. And I also made one just to capture all the effects in one place and a few other extra channels, the click and the music playback for intermission music. So that's another great use of view groups. Let's load up another snapshot and see another example. So this one is allows me to view all the channels related to each band member from the front of house engineer's perspective. So these are all of Jen's channels. She's the guitar player, her vocals, the vocal effects, and the VCAs pertaining to guitars and vocals. If I look at Ben, similar, I, I'm, he's the bass player. So he has the two bass channels, his, his vocals, the F verbs, and the uh, VCAs related to the vocal, to Ben. Helen is the same. I'm repeating the effects and the vocal VCAs, and then I just have her guitars and her vocals. Art, again, similarly, he's the keyboardist, vocals, keys, every channel related to those. And then Leslie, she's the drummer. She has the click. She, she's the only one who, ha who pertains to that but she doesn't have any vocal channels. So that's one good application. There's one other application I see people use, but actually I don't think it's a great one. So let me show you what I often see. And that's people trying to use it for monitor mixes. So I have Leslie selected and the, she's the drummer. So these are all the channels that she has in her monitor mix. And so I could select her aux end in the mix selector and now I can adjust her monitor mixing only those channels. Now let's say I want to change to Jen's monitor mix. So I change her view group and her mix selector. And now I'm looking at her channels. But that's a lot of steps. I have to change a mix select and a view group every time I want to adjust. And if I want to add a channel to it, I'd have to go back to all, push up a channel, and also go into assignment and make sure I enable that channel for the right view group. So it's a lot of steps. There's a better way, and that's to use the auto option. If I select that, now when I select a new aux end, it will automatically show me all the channels that the faders are pushed up just a little bit. Any amount other than all the way at the bottom will be present, muted or unmuted, in the auto view group. So now, every time I just change monitor mixes, the channels are changing. Leslie's really easy to see. Changes the channels completely when I go between Leslie and Jeanette. And this even works back on the main channel. I can go back to main and see all of the channels again that the faders are pushed up on. So that's pretty similar to that custom view group I made before. So this is a much faster way to adjust things. And if you need to add a channel to a monitor mix, I just need to go to all real quick, push up that channel, go back to auto, and you'll see that channel is automatically added. So very easy to add and remove channels to that auto. So I generally recommend people not create view groups for monitor mixes, instead use the auto function. And then use something like an in use or a mix along with auto when you're switching between monitor mixes. It's especially useful if you're mix mixing I have a separate front of house and monitor engineer. Uh, and only use the auto for monitor mixing while the front of house engineer has control over the view groups. Finally, one last example to show you 
I'll recall the instrument type. Remember, this shows me various instruments. And we can enable multi-select. When this is enabled, you can select more than one view group at a time. So now I'm looking at the bass guitar and the keys. And this can be useful in certain situations, this probably being the most useful um, as you want to look at the drums and the bass. If you have a, a lot of different instruments and you need more than six kind of view groups, uh, and you can kind of create macro view groups, so to speak, or, gr or super view groups, groups of view groups in this way. So that's really useful in special situations, but there are times when it makes sense. So hopefully you learned a thing or two about view groups. I'll cover some other features in future videos. If you have any ideas or features you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.